Welcome back to our Way 31 Friday Night Football Show. We have more teams to get to who are trying their best to see another week of high school football. It's round one of the playoffs. Let's go on out to Decatur. Austin in for a tough fight tonight against Oak Mountain. We pick it up in the third quarter with Austin trailing a lateral pass to Winston Lyon. The senior wide receiver a little stiff arm here. And he's as good as gone for a Black Bears touchdown. Now the game's 20-24. They're not to be outdone, though, by Eagles quarterback Evan Smith. He's going to call his own number. Blast pass defenders and charges this one in for an Oak Mountain touchdown. Eagles go up now 31 to 21. Austin trying to respond here after the kick return. Trey Shackleford making moves. He's been a playmaker all season, but he's spun down by Garrett Murphy in the ball. Uh oh. Comes loose. Dean Noll dives in and recovers it for the Eagles. Oak Mountain summits to a big win, 41 to 28. Nick Saban's newest addition, that is Jaquincy Kuway McKinstry showing off that script day on his glove. The Indians offense struggled to get on track early. Arab stops him on the fourth down. Pinson Valley playing some D2. Arab tries the halfback pass, but Tredarius Swanson is having none of it. Pinson Valley's Michael Sharp Jr. gets a handoff. It's going to make a couple of guys miss. He's just going to continue going on. Takes 27 yards for the touchdown. 7 nothing Indians. Pinson quarterback Zach Pyron, formerly with Fife, rolls out under pressure. Throws it up, and Kool-Aid McKinstry hauls it in for a 34-yard touchdown. There's that strip A again. Pinson Valley takes it 45 to nothing. The number one team and unbeaten Thompson Warriors were putting a whooping on Grissom who's back in the playoffs for the first time since 2004. Kamari and Hambright wrestles the running back to the ground for a big time loss there for the Tigers. Just nothing going well for Grissom all night. Nate Riddle and Jax Van Zant coming in for the sack. They're looking good, and that's why they're the state champions. Folks, Connor Harrell's going to go deep. He finds Ryan Peppins for the touchdown. Thompson ends up winning big 49-7. to The East Lawrence Eagles are looking to capture their first playoff win in school history tonight. Do they soar? Get their wings clipped. Ouch. A quick handoff here to Wildcat with Garrett. He goes in for the touchdown. The two-point conversion was good, and the Cats are up 8-0. East Lawrence, quick to respond. Junior, Caden Rivers, the shake up of the defenders like a Polaroid picture and brings it in for an Eagles touchdown. Look at them go. They're not to be outdone, though. Eagles also go for the two points. Levi Barnes fires it off and finds a wide open Dawson Terry in the end zone. Now we're all tied up at eight. But Sachs is going to come away with the win. Final score, 22 to 15. All right, we got Hoover hosting Spark when this one's down there in the 205. Malik Thomas gets a swing pass, fumbles into the end zone. For the Bucks, though, luckily, Joseph Buffett is there to get on it. And later, for the touchdown, Josh Lundy looking deep, underthrows Caleb Ransall, who's going to come up with the pick. But Hoover would return the favor. Nicholas Sawyer, Spark and quarterback, looking to the end zone. Jay Avery is there to just pick it off and give the ball right back to the Bucks Before halftime, Lundy swings it out to Jabari Gaines and into the end zone to put Hoover up 14 to nothing. They would go on to win big time, 49 to 14. Over at Wildcat Stadium is Fort Payne hosting the Gardendale Rockets in the first round of the 6 day playoffs. In the first quarter, Gardendale's gonna get the ball. Will Crowder gonna hit Derek Carter Jr. who cuts across the field and turns on his Jets. Flying all the way down the field. No one's going to catch this guy. The Rockets are blasting off to the board first. They get a score. After a quick four pain possession, the Rockets would have the ball back, but not for long. Jacoby Foster is able to strip Lou Ross with Heisman Brown. Ooh, that's a cool name. There to recover. Later with the Wildcats trailing 10 to 3, it's Caden DeBose in the handoff. He says, you think one guy can take me down? It takes an entire huddle as he keeps pumping before eventually hitting the turf. With possession again, Crowder decides he can handle this one on his own, pushing his way through the defense and forcing his way across the line and increasing Gardendale's lead to 14 points. The Rockets would hold on to it, winning 52 to 24. 
The Central High School Wildcats are hoping for a victory over the Haleyville Lions. It's going to be the Lions ball first. 15 seconds into the game, quarterback Eli Musso hands it off to Bartes, then send it back to Musso. He's going to throw it downfield. Wow, Lions get the touchdown. Let's go to the kickoff return. Central Jaden Smith is back deep. He gets the ball. It looks like he might go far, but uh-oh, it's a fumble right there, and Haleyville recovers it. Haleyville ends up handling business easily tonight, 48-18. to All right, Max Cohan is out in Valleyhead for their playoff game against Brilliant. We'll go to him now with all the highlights. With back-to-back -back playoff berths for the first time since 2014 and 2015, the Valleyhead Tigers trying to ensure they didn't have a first-round exit as they took on the Brilliant Tigers this evening. Out in Valleyhead, the Tigers trail the Brilliant Tigers 21-12 at the half. But they'd come out quick, facing a fourth down. Jordan Burt takes the keeper and rolls to his right, able to escape defenders before getting the first down and heading out of bounds. Now knocking at the Tigers' door, the team that had been running the ball all game decides to air it out, and it pays off as Burt hits Pacey Cooper and brings Valley Head within three. On the next possession, brilliant quarterback Timothy Bryant tries to throw out of trouble, but ends up finding more of it as Jordan Burt is there to pick him off and takes this one on a run for the ages. Finding a seam, he tiptoes his way down the sideline before cutting back to the middle of the field, making cuts and moves all the way back before taking it in for a 53-yard return. That would put the Tigers back on top, 25-21. There's your final from this one. Round two starts next week. Reporting in Valley Head, Max Cohan, Way 31 News. Thank you so much, Max. Let's take a look at some scoreboards down to 3A. Sylvania falls to Winfield 40 to 24. Fife, man, they're our back to back state champs. They took down Oakman 69 to 21. Walter Welburn took out Phil Campbell from the playoffs 63 to 20. Still in 3A. Colbert Heights falls to Piedmont. Piedmont is really good, guys. 47-7, that final score. Plainview, the Bears get a big win over Vimont, 41-14. Another 41-14 score, but Geraldine ends up on the losing half. J.B. Pennington takes them down. To 2A, Tanner falls to Spring Garden, 59-7. Red Bay shuts out Winston County, 26-0. And North Sand Mountain, the Bisons get it done over Southeastern, 19-0. Moving on to some more 2A schools, Addison takes out Colbert County. Cleveland, they shut out Falkville 24-0. Westbrook Christian takes care of business against Section 42 to nothing. To 1A we go, Woodland beats Waterloo. Parker takes down East Limestone. That was actually a 5A game tonight. R.A. Hubbard falls to Raglan 16-20. One more 1A round, Hackleburg falls to Winterboro, 30-8. to Decatur Heritage, they get the big win over Wadley, 48-37. to And Woodville falls to Pickens County, 33-8. to So round one of the playoffs in the books. We have several teams moving on to round two. That'll be next Friday. We're all trying to get to that big state championship game in Tuscaloosa. Thanks so much for watching our Friday Night Football Show. We'll see you back again here, same time, same place, next week.